I'm about to explain color management to you, which is the easiest way to get amazing colors in DaVinci Resolve in just one click. Seriously, you can take footage that looks like this straight out of camera, super flat and gray log footage, and by clicking one button in a menu, it will immediately look saturated and contrasty just like it's supposed to. And because I'm all about helping you out with video editing, I want you to know that I have a free guide that I've put together called Edit Videos Like a Pro. And you can download this guide completely for free and learn a lot of secrets like this secret that we're about to talk about in this video. Now let's talk color management, starting with what the heck is color management? Well, here's the simplest explanation for you. At its core, color management is making sure that the colors of your video look the same on every single device that they're viewed on, meaning that the colors that you see on the back of your camera when you're recording will look the same on the computer screen that you're editing on, as well as whatever screen your audience is viewing your video on, be it a computer, TV, phone, or tablet. And that's a good thing, right? You want your colors to look the same across all of these screens. Thankfully, the latest versions of most popular video editing software include this color management feature where you can enable it to make sure that your colors are going to look their best. And in addition, very important here, this color management feature is going to have the added benefit of saving you a ton of time and helping you color grade your videos very quickly. In this video in particular, I'm going to be explaining how to enable and work with color management in DaVinci Resolve, but just know that this is also possible in Adobe Premiere Pro, and you can leave me a comment below if you'd like to see me make a tutorial for Premiere as well. Jumping right into DaVinci Resolve, the first thing that you're going to want to do is import some footage that you filmed in a log picture profile. In this case, I filmed this footage in S-Log3 with my Sony a7S III, and we're going to pretend that this video on our timeline is now fully edited and I'm ready to color correct and color grade it. Once you have reached this point, the first thing that you're going to want to do is go up to File, Project Settings, and look at all these settings here. My goodness. The one that you're going to want to focus on is the Color Management tab, so make sure that you select that. And then here for Color Science, we're going to change this from DaVinci YRGB to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. And then you have other settings here, Color Processing Mode, Output Color Space. You can leave all this at the default of SDR and SDR Rec 709. By enabling this Color Managed mode, you're essentially telling DaVinci Resolve that you want it to keep your colors consistent across the widest variety of screens. And you're also enabling the program to be automatically capable of changing the colors and saturation and contrast of any footage that you imported automatically. Does that sound cool? It's pretty cool. All you have to do now is click save down here. And with that done, uh, nothing's changed, Matt. What happened? Well, hold on. Okay. Remember how I said the color management is going to enable you to get amazing colors in your videos in just one click? Well, it's time to do that now. Let's go over here to the color page and burr, 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 we got our nodes, we got our preview, we got our clips down here. Remember, we are working with log footage that is super flat and desaturated and to turn it from log footage into Rec. 709 footage that looks like what your eyes saw when filming, you're commonly going to either need to go down here to your curves and drag down and add some contrast back in like, okay, things are popping a bit more now, right? Then we can go over here to our saturation, crank that up and look, okay, we made it not log. Now it's colorful, right? But with color management, Resolve is going to offer you an even easier way of doing this that's going to give you the most accurate contrast, saturation, and colors. So let's use that, right? Right click over here, reset node gray, get rid of that, back to log. We've already enabled color management in the settings. Now all we have to do is make one more change, and here it is. All you have to do is right click on your clip down here in the middle, and you're going to see a new menu option has appeared that says input color space. And by default, this is going to be set to Project Rec. 709 Scene, but you have a lot of other options here from a ton of different camera manufacturers, like Apple with Apple Log. You've got Canon with C Log 1 through 3. DJI with D-Log, Nikon with N-Log, and right down here, the one we're looking for, Sony with S-Log 3. Now, this is arguably the most important part of color management because this is where you need to know which camera and picture profile your video was filmed in. And if you filmed your video footage of yourself, it's probably a no-brainer and you know what you filmed in. But if you're editing footage that a friend sent to you or you're working for a client, etc., and they gave you footage, you're going to need to confirm with them what picture profile they used before you use color management because you have to know the camera and the picture profile. Thankfully, in this example, I know that I used a Sony camera filming in the S Gamut 3. Cine slash S Log 3 profile. So we're going to click on this and bam, look at that. One click 
colorful, saturated. That is looking good. Isn't that crazy? This footage just went from S-Log3 where it was super flat and desaturated to the contrasty and saturated Rec. 709 color space. And this is the exact amount of contrast and saturation that needs to be applied to S-Log footage. It's pretty darn magical. And I hear you already typing down in the comments, Matt, do I have to go down here and right click on every single one of these clips and go to input color space and then go down to Sony or whatever I used for every single clip? No, you don't have to do that at all. You can press control or command and then select all the clips like this. You can click on one clip and hold down the shift key, select all of them like that. Or if you have all of your clips and you know you film them all with the same camera and same picture profile, press control or command A, that will select all of them. Right click, go up here to input color space. We're gonna select Sony S-Log3 Cine. Bam, look at that. All colored, looking fantastic. One click, y'all, it's amazing. And remember, because you're using color management to change your colors scientifically by changing your footage from Log to Rec. 709, what is one of the perks of color management? Your footage should look consistent across all the screens that people are gonna be viewing it on by doing things this way. The one thing that I would keep in mind is that using this color management tool is not going to save you if your camera settings were wrong whenever you were filming. So if your camera was overexposed or your white balance was significantly off, color management is not going to fix your exposure or white balance, meaning you're still going to need to tweak your footage in post. In addition, you may be wondering, Matt, does this color management mean that I don't need to use LUTs anymore? And my answer is yes and no. In my opinion and experience, color management reduces the need to use a LUT that simply changes a color space, like one that you would use to shift your colors from Log to Rec. 709, for example, because color management will handle that for you. Of course, keep in mind that if you like the way that a certain conversion LUT looks, by all means, keep using that. There's nothing stopping you from doing it. And in addition, while color management can help with converting your log footage so that it looks better, just shifting the footage from a log to Rec. 709 isn't enough in my opinion. You really need to add a creative look on top of it. Remember, using a LUT isn't just something that you do to make your log footage not log anymore. A good LUT can change the emotion that the audience is feeling whenever they watch a video by altering the colors of the video in a pleasing way. And this is where LUTs, especially creative LUTs, are really important. Color management can get you closer to the look that you want, but in my experience, this is only about 50 to 75% of the way there. And there still is a lot of color grading work that needs to be done if you want your colors to look their best. This is why my Who Is Matt LUTs, which you can check out at the link down in the video description, come with two version of every LUT, a log version and a standard version. And you can see that right here. If we go over here to LUT, Who Is Matt LUTs, log and standard. The log version is great if you don't want to mess with color management and you want an all-in-one LUT that you can apply that will add contrast and saturation and also convert your log footage to Rec. 709 while adding a unique look on top that gives you a vibrant and true to life colors that your viewers will love. Doesn't that look great? I love how this looks. But if you want to use color management, you can totally do that. Let's reset the node grade, go back over here to input color space and change it back to Sony S Gamma 3 S Log 3 Cine. And with the standard version of my LUTs, which come with every download, let's go back over here to who is my LUTs to the standard version, click that, and it looks incredibly similar. The difference is that this standard LUT is not going to add all that contrast and saturation because it assumes you did not film in log or that you use color management to already convert your footage from log to Rec. 709. This way you get the best of both worlds. You get LUTs that work both with log footage as well as with standard color managed footage and it's awesome. I'll link to my Who Is Matt LUTs down in the description below for you to check it out and I will also link to my free edit videos like a pro guide. If you want some fantastic tips to level up your video editing, regardless of whether you edit in DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro or Final Cut, etc. I would love for you to check out this guide. It's completely free and linked down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.